At some location, there is a convoy transporting a large quantity of goods. While Tu Mong Diu and Man Qin Fai are hiding behind a wall to report back, they overhear the conversation of three individuals advancing towards them. One of them, smoking a cigarette and appearing angry, tells the instigator that the boss has given them the opportunity to participate individually, but they want a bigger advantage, so why not eliminate them altogether? Another person, holding a grenade in hand, advises to stay calm, as they will only survive for a few more days. The instigator tightly grips the gun and grenade, determined to say that when they rob this strategic cargo, the boss will be promoted to the level of grandmaster. At that point, no matter how much they consume, they will have to regurgitate it all. Ha ha ha, that's right, at this point, Tu Mong Diu and Man Qin Fai, with horrified faces, sweat pouring like rain, look at each other as if understanding the intent, then quickly step back. Both of them quickly fled. Man Qin Fai, running while gritting his teeth, said, These guys are insane. It's unbelievable that their target is the strategic cargo transport. Tu Mong Diu quickly responded, Don't forget, they've gathered so many people. No wonder Ma Kua Van is ruthless like that. Unafraid of leaving traces, the eight level S individuals, armed with hot weapons, had enough power to destroy the entire Riverside City. A grandmaster outside the law is truly beyond imagination. Thinking about this, Tu Mong Diu furrowed his brow, sweating profusely from horror. This has exceeded our ability to control, we have to go back and report quickly. After running for a while, Tu Mong Diu and Man Qin Fai, with frowning faces, were shocked to realize that they forgot to bring Lu Shang, he had run away. Carrying such a burden was truly inconvenient. They quickly turned back, praying to the heavens, hoping that the kid would hide well and not be discovered. Otherwise, no one could save him. While Tu Mong Diu and Man Qin Fai were praying for the youth Lu Sheng to be aware of the danger and hide, the young man himself casually approached the group of people. The guy with the spiky hair, upon seeing a kid coming, exclaimed, Who's this kid? The person next to him muttered a few words, Hey kid, where are you from? And was immediately met with a punch to the face from Lu Sheng, making blood splatter from his mouth. As Lu Sheng approached with a staff, the long-haired guy started moving his arms and legs, saying, Oh well, this kid wants a beating. Both the green-haired guy and the spiky-haired guy were surprised by Lu Shang's powerful actions as he single-handedly faced the aggression of the group. They shouted loudly, What's going on? Do you want to find death, kid? After saying this, the whole gang surrounded Lu Shang and rushed at him with weapons. With a cold gaze and a powerful aura, Lu Shang swiftly executed some basic martial arts moves. Before the others could react, he had already defeated several of them. The guy with the spiky hair was the last one lying down after a flashy spin of Lu Shang's staff. Lu Shang glanced around and muttered, eight level six martial artists, including two peak wind level six martial artists, some level five, and level four martial artists. If the mission is as easy as this, why hide and conceal until now? Just charge straight in for a quick resolution. At this moment, under Lu Shang's feet, the guy with the spiky hair approached, grabbing his leg and muttering that the boss would help them seek revenge. However, before he could finish his statement, Lu Shang had already placed his foot in the middle of the guy's neck, creating a horrifying sound. After the footstep, the young man added a chilling remark. Even in death, there's still a lot of useless laziness. Lu Shang looked around and only saw bodies, and the young man muttered, Huh, so this is what killing is. At this point, Lu Shang thought to himself that the desire for destruction and annihilation had significantly diminished, with not much emotional fluctuation. It could be because of eliminating too many undead in the dream space, or perhaps inheriting too many blood-soaked memories, or maybe it was due to the identity of those he killed. They were all ruthless thugs, and killing them was just cleaning up the criminal scum. Justice might arrive late, but it would surely not be absent, so accept the punishment from justice. Five minutes earlier, at this moment, a girl with a furious face slammed the table and exclaimed loudly, Oh my, I've set it already, I've set the goal for 20 minutes. The blonde guy laughed haughtily at the girl's anger. Oh, you said you demanded it? Who do you think you are? The enraged girl shouted loudly, Do you really want to die? Suddenly, a voice echoed, All right, stop it, all of you. Hearing this voice, the blonde guy was shocked not having time to calm down before getting punched. 
Immediately, he collapsed, hugging his stomach, and said, What's going on, Ma Kwa Van? The aura of anger radiated strongly from Ma Kwa Van, with a cold gaze and a casual sweep of his clothes. Ma Kwa Van spoke up, I've said it, the plan is mine, and I called you guys here. Here, my fist is the biggest. When I say how much you guys get, that's exactly how much. Anyone with opinions can leave now, I won't stop you. The whole group had sweat on their uneasy faces, wanting to add something but afraid to make a sound. Suddenly, there was laughter, ha ha ha, Ma is absolutely right. A guy in an orange jacket stepped forward, everyone is here to make money, so why argue over a few pieces of cheap money and ruin the camaraderie? Am I right, Ma Kwa Van? The face of this guy looked terrifying, and someone in the group immediately gritted their teeth and exclaimed, Kai Dean Thoi, the strategic transportation convoy is not just a small amount of cheap money. Kai Dean continued, for a level 6 martial artist, it's indeed not a small amount, but for a grandmaster, it's nothing. The whole group, upon hearing this, was shocked and horrified, what? It's time to upgrade to the grandmaster level. At this moment, everyone behaved like obedient puppies, eager to please, haha. Ha. So Ma gathered us to rob the strategic transportation convoy for a breakthrough to the grandmaster level. Why didn't you say it earlier? Then we wouldn't argue anymore. Most of it must be yours, Ma. Distribute it freely. Even though there's no benefit this time, I, old Tam, will definitely participate. A grandmaster is rarely seen among the robbers. Ma is truly extraordinary, admirable, admirable. Kai Dean approached and patted Ma Kwa Van on the shoulder before offering him a cigarette, saying, Ha ha, then congratulations, Ma, my brother Kwa Van, on a successful and smooth promotion to grandmaster. Thanking for the good wishes, Kai Dean wore a sly smile and whispered, however, if you want to become a grandmaster, I also want the same. Therefore, I also need a share of the spoils. Ma Kwa Van, with a cold gaze, uttered a single word, agreed. In his heart, he silently thought, Kai Dean Thoi is the only existence here worthy of standing side by side with me, not only as a level 6 peak wind but also as someone possessing a rare talent in elemental control. I heard he was an outstanding martial arts student initially, but a tragic fire consumed his entire family, leading to a complete change in his character, steering him onto the path of ruthless bandits. He greatly enjoys using fire to burn living beings, and his cruelty is renowned even within the criminal underworld. Upon hearing Ma Kwa Van's agreement to split the spoils into three parts, Kai Dean struck a pose, saying, Thank you, Brother Kwa Van. Suddenly, a voice chimed in from outside, since no one has any objections, I'll simplify the distribution a bit. The entire group became alert, there's movement, who's there? The person with purple hair raised their hand as a signal not to panic, probably indicating that the police had arrived. Nothing significant, nothing to worry about. Let's hit the road, and then find another place to continue our discussion. Exactly, with so many level 6 martial artists, are we still afraid of a few police officers? A guy with a short, sharp knife licked his lips, showing signs of bloodlust. A familiar foot emerged, accompanied by a teasing remark, just in time for a pent-up rage in the stomach, releasing some stress today. As he finished speaking, a powerful punch rushed towards the guy with the short knife. He was sent flying across the crowd and slammed into the opposite wall, surrounded by a cloud of dusty smoke. Lu Shang's familiar silhouette, with a wounded nose, emerged slowly from the haze. The crowd buzzed with discussion, what's going on? The kid hasn't even grown his hair yet, and it seems like the police are all gone. Perhaps Boss Quan intentionally let them go, and now it's our turn. Kai Dean turned his head to look at Lu Shang, puzzled. Lu Shang casually extended two fingers and coldly stated, two minutes for those who want to run away, you can start running now.